Hi everyone, Steve Scott here, and this is another episode of uh, Judo Analysis. And in this episode, I'm going to look at the classic form or the split down the middle type of Uchimata that many people see all over the world. This is the classic form. There are many forms of Uchimata, by the way. This is one of them. Actually, this is one I think that one should achieve to try to learn. There are other easier methods to learn leading up to this, progressing up to this level of, of uh, technical ability. What I'm trying to say here, there's a long learning curve in doing Uchimata correctly. Um, so it takes time. It take, like any, any other very good skill, it takes time. And in this video, I try to point out, and Derek does too, uh, the different types of um, things you need to do, the defining aspects of a classic Uchimata, the surikomi action, the deep foot, the deep back step entry, um, hip rotation, all these things, okay, we're going to talk about. Uh, also, you will notice that uh, the, the, the grip Derek is using is not a standard kumikata grip. He's using a left hand on the sleeve, the right hand around the back toward the back of the, the judo gi, the, the top part of the jacket there. Uh, again, you can achieve surikomi action uh, with that way as well. You don't just have to lift up on the, on the lapel. So just keep that in mind. There is a slight difference there. Uh, and what I did, I just... And Derek does, did the same thing. It's, he's doing the Uchimata. He's, he's, he's t teaching it there. Um, you, you adapt it to make it work for you. You still stay, stay within the basic confines of the, of, of the whole body movement of what you want the, the technique to look like. In this case, a classic split down the middle style Uchimata. But you can make minor adjustments to fit your style. So that's what we're doing here. And again, there are many different types of Uchimata, many different applications and variations. This is probably the most classic uh, style of Uchimata done, and it is beauty in, beauty in action. It's, I've always re regarded Uchimata uh, to, to boxing in a way. Uh, that sounds weird, but in boxing, you have the straight right punch, the straight right overhand punch, um, classic you know, knockout punch in, in boxing. Uchimata is, to me, that same type of classic overhand type punch in judo or sambo even because it is a classic big throw. It gets big events it get, or it gets big effects, and the guy knows he's been beat when he's been thrown with Uchimata. So it's a great technique. We wanted to video this, and we wanted to show this analysis at this time that we're going to be doing other uh, judo, tech, uh, judo analysis shows on Uchimata at different times, but we wanted to show this right off. So here you go, a classic split down the middle Uchimata. And now, as he keeps turning, he will split down the middle. Okay, now, we're going to work on a split down the middle, a classic style Uchimata, at least how I look at it, a lot of people do it the same way. And notice some differences. You're not throwing them over your hip primarily. You're using your, your hips in position, but you're lifting them. You'll see when Derek does this. Can you just <coughs> watch the situation here? Just watch how he does it. Classic Uchimani. Just point the toe and everything else. So let's parse that apart and we'll take a look at it here. All right. Now, again, the grip. Now, if somebody says, look, I'm sorry. Look, if you want to grip like this, grip like this. Okay? I mean, not everybody's built the same. That's fine. So if you, you're, you're surete, if you want it here, that's okay. That's cool. But what we're going to show today is to get your grip, and you saw how he did it here. We're going to get this grip like we have here pretty much. Okay? All right. So that, that's a very good grip. Again, don't go over the shoulder because he can count me as an Aranagi, and I can be playing. So Derek will show you here how to grab like this. And when we do this, we're not grabbing so low down here, we're grabbing a little here, up here, so we can get the classic pull. This is a classic surikomi lifting, lifting pulling action, Uchimata style, okay? But we'll, we'll, and we're going to get our foot out of the way. So when I do this, I'll show it now, and Derek will show it him as well. When we're doing this, when I'm setting them up, and I start this, I'm pulling up and, see, up, okay, looking at the back of my hand and rolling it, just like you can learn, very classic style. Okay. But I'm not stepping to him because he can foot sweep me, okay? And plus, if I do this, I'm in a really long position for this throw, okay? I want to get my right foot out of the way. I just want it out of the way. I just want it across here. So when I'm doing this, I'll step across here, and the back step is the key one. I often call it a deep step in Chimata, okay? All right, come on in here. So let's look at it again. Let's have him, I'll have him through the throw game one more time. 
And watch how it just comes in. Put you on it. Okay. So again, let's take it apart and we'll put it back together. All right, so the grip, okay? Yeah. All right. So the grip is, get your grip. Which is the grip. Again, the first thing you touch, touch it with is your hands, right? So let's get a good grip. Solid grip here, okay? Now, if you do float your elbow, that might work for you. Some guys will do that. We'll lift up high like this, okay? If it throws, it's good, all right? But the key thing here is the hikite, the pulling hand. And when he pulls, he's curling up and he's lifting. Now look at this space. He's going to fill that with his body action, not just his hip. Now, when he steps across with his foot, he's, he's not really stepping to his toe. He's just stepping across to make space, or to fill space. Come on back out again. So look at his right foot. It's probably even kind of close to him there. See, now that's, he's not stepping to him because he could be foot swept, all right? So there, and that's the pivot foot. Now look at the back leg here. It comes in deep. Now, turn, let's turn back. Come on back out. So now watch this back leg as it steps in. See how deep that is? Splits right down the middle. That deep step is essential in this particular style of Uchimano. And, and notice that, so the Surikomi action is not just with the hands, not just with the, it's the whole body movement, okay? So he's stepping in and lifting. Now what he does is he will turn his head, and as he turns his head, he's going to sweep. He didn't try to lift him with his leg. Just like the advice he got from Jim Bregman, what I've got from just anybody who's a good, good Uchimata man or woman, is what it is is just an assist. It's the cherry on the ice cream. Okay, it's the cherry on the topping. And to that point, he said that the, the way that he learned it um, when he was over uh, going to college over there, I think he was over there for like a couple years. Um, they explained that they would always start new students with uh, Surikomi Goshi. And then you would add in the other steps. So, you know, move in, boom, okay, you got that down. Move in, okay, <coughs> now you got a new Shimano. So it just becomes adding a leg in there and where the leg goes, all the other entries the same. Now, obviously, we're not really using that Surikomi movement to jack them up with our standard grips, but the idea is still the same. As we're moving across, we hug them in with our back grip, okay? And we're starting to pull here. As soon as our back grip comes in there, you use that to really pull the guy in, and he starts moving that way, okay? Then the leg comes in. So the head up. went down, foot went up, okay? Always point the toe, always point the toe. And if you think about it, I just gotta lift up the leg, you'll never point your toe. Yeah. You gotta point that toe. Now, now watch, when he sets him up, now, straight combing action, lifting, pulling here, and like that. Now, as he, now watch the right foot across. It's not stepping to him, it's just across his body. Now, he's giving his room, his hips room to, to turn, and rotation is deep here. Got a lot of torque, he's ready to load him up and nail him. See that, look at that back foot in there. And now, he, as he keeps turning, he will split down the middle, catch the Uchima, okay? So that's, that's how the mechanics of this thing work. And not that I teach you the right way to do Uchimata, or Jim Bregman's only way is the only way, but a lot of people teach Uchimata wrong. And they get people into bad habits, they never develop a good Uchimata. And it's, so I think if you take step in progression, like learning the leg style Uchimata, the spinning Uchimata, to give yourself confidence and some good throwing skills, and you may like that, that may be your throw in your entire career in Judo, that's great. But then advance on to this one. It's generally the next step I take my guys, some of you in this room, that we, we, we can turn. It gets you learned to get your hip deep in there and then to step in and ready to spin. That's, that's really important to do. And it takes a long time. There's a big learning curve on Uchimata. Okay, it takes a long time. So don't expect you're gonna get it right away. But you will if you keep doing by, you know, the mechanics correctly every time. You'll, you'll make it happen. Anything to add to that? So the, with the back step, the deeper the back step, the easier it's going to be, the, the higher your head can be. It still has to dip, but it doesn't have to be like way down by your foot so that your other foot can go way high. 
but you have to substitute a deeper step in order to do that because that gets your hips preloaded underneath his hips. So if my back step is right here, my legs have to come down now and now we're back into more of the you know, Surrey Comey style action where I lift them up with my legs and my arms and then I come back through. So if we want to avoid having to use our legs so much, deeper back step. Along with that is as soon as you turn around, you're going to go, oh shoot, I'm going to face plant. So the turning point and the punching with your dominant hand is what's going to become important next. If you don't do that, yes, you will face plant, okay? But I always tell our guys, punch with your dominant hand and then look behind you as much as you can. He will land where he will land. Watch, watch how he does it. Watch the feet. Everybody see, no, but, and we do this all the time, poor Eric, you guys watch the videos. You know. Look here, when he talks about when he's punching, no, no, just, just do your natural. But when you're coming in, see how this is? And he's now, he's going to slug a guy, okay? And as he back steps in, he's being nice, but you can see how he does it. Make right. sense, everybody? Yeah. Okay. okay. Be nice when you're out on the, the tatami, that's why I'm coming down like that. The more you punch, the more you're pile driving the guy into the mat, okay? So if you want to really focus on that aspect, make sure you're using a crash pad. But what we'll keep you from doing that is a lot of pulling action yeah. here. This is this lifting hand with the left hand, the seeking tank, the pulling hand. Very, very important. You good? Let's try it.